so the Dodge Challenger Hellcat, I mean, uh, it needs no introduction. What else can I really say? I mean, it's been out for a while. There's gazillions of videos of this amazing car on YouTube already. But me being uh, at least known as more of a Ford guy, I've had a Ford Fusion, I have a supercharged Ford F-150, I have a Ford Raptor. Although I've never really owned a Ford Mustang, I do have a lot of experience with them. I've never had a Dodge, never owned a Dodge, never really driven a lot of Dodges, but I've always loved the Challenger specifically and also even more specifically, the Hellcat. So today I thought we'd talk about my experience of having a Hellcat, although I've only had it for a uh, little over a week, but what do I think about it? What's it like to daily drive? What's it like on a road trip? What's the performance like? What's the fuel economy like? Those kind of practical things that you will need to know if you're looking at buying a Hellcat. But first, let's just take a look at it. It is absolutely menacing look. I love the modern slash retro look of the Challenger. And uh, with it being a Hellcat, it looks like it has two headlights on each side here, but I know I'm preaching to the choir, to many of you Mopar people probably watching this video, but this is an air intake right here, and that's the headlight and the same uh, on the driver's side, of course. We got big intakes on the hood, two on each side and one in the middle. And yeah, it's, it's just, it's mean looking. And one thing that I've always loved about Dodge is they just stay true to that American muscle power heritage. It's very common nowadays for manufacturers, especially domestic American manufacturers, to you know kind of downsize their engines. You know, a lot of them are coming out with a lot of four cylinders, a lot of downsizing from V8s to six cylinders with twin turbo or even four cylinders with twin turbos. And in 2015, Dodge was kind of like, eh, f that. We're gonna come out with a 707 horsepower challenger and also charger and we're gonna call it the hellcat i mean it's just so badass and awesome i just love them for doing that then of course as we all know they came out with the demon that's even more brutal than this car right here and since then they've come out with a uh, hellcat wide body and also the red eye so definitely a lot of different models you can buy of the challenger specifically with over 700 horsepower and even 800 horsepower and here we have the heart of the beast, 6.2 liter, supercharged V8, 707 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. The supercharger sounds absolutely awesome, just a perfect amount of whining at all time. And uh, yeah, I just, I love it. Now, if you haven't watched the video already, it's my good buddy Will Motivation on YouTube and Instagram. Definitely check him out. Who lent me this car? <laughs> because since my F12 is currently down, being fixed. I'm gonna pick it up here pretty soon actually and also my F-150 is uh, currently down being fixed. I'm gonna pick that up here pretty soon as well but the fact of the matter is that I didn't have a car and he reached out hey man just take my Hellcat I don't drive it enough so that's why I'm having this car so big thanks to him once again I appreciate you dude it means a lot especially for an automotive youtuber like myself with no car. Also, it just, uh, it's perfect in black. It looks so menacing. I love, love, love the look of this car. Now, one thing though, that is uh, pretty interesting, and this again has been covered in uh, many different videos prior to me making this video, is for a rear wheel drive car with the amount of power that the Hellcat has, Dodge fitted 275s in the rear. This car should definitely have at least 305s. So uh, it's not a lot of rubber, which is why the Hellcat is definitely a tire slayer. Uh, it loves to shred tires if you don't have uh, traction control on. Something else that is kind of interesting is that the front tires are just as wide. They're 275-40 sitting on 20 inch wheels as well. So, uh, I mean, you could basically rotate these tires whenever you're getting an oil change and stuff like that. And that is kind of rare for rear wheel drive cars with a lot of power. Usually it's a lot wider tires in the rear here, but I don't know, that's what Dodge chose to do. And I know a lot of people that own these cars. That's uh, one of the first upgrades is uh, putting different rubber on there and also wider rubber. Speaking of the rubber, I drove this car down to Asheville, North Carolina and back. And in both directions, I ran into heavy, heavy uh, thunderstorms, a lot of rain. I mean, it was pouring down. At some points, I was just driving 35 miles an hour, 
on the highway because uh, windshield wipers couldn't keep up and I, I could hardly see anything. And something I noticed is, now granted, Will's done a couple burnouts in the car. <laughs> These Pirellis, I can notice it up front, feeling it in the steering wheel and also in the rear, they are not good on water at all. I mean, I was hydroplaning, not, you know, dangerously, but I could feel the whole car shifting. So I don't really like these Pirelli P0s that are currently sitting on the car. Not very confidence inspiring when you're driving it in heavy rain, especially with it having 770 horsepower. But uh, I think that we should start it up and uh, get a listen. Now before we do this, I should mention the car is bone stock. The only thing that's really been done to it is window tint. So exhaust is stock. But of course, all you have to do is a muffler delete on one of these things and they're they scream it is so so loud but either way even stock it sounds amazing we're gonna turn on the ventilated seat here it is not very warm outside but it's extremely muggy so before we take it out on a drive here we'll just talk about the uh, interior quickly these SRT seats I, uh, I love them they're very bolstered now they're not typical racing seats they're not carbon fiber super thin rock hard seats but yeah, I don't, this car is not really meant to be a track car either. But very comfortable sitting in here. I'm six foot two. A lot of big guys, tall people, they have challengers as well and they fit just fine. So a lot of room in here, especially for a coupe. Cockpit area, also very nice. I love this uh, infotainment screen here in the middle. Try out some performance here shortly. Infotainment screen is also very intuitive. Um, we have SRT mode here, which I really like. Um, you can change up the driving modes completely and it's a huge difference when you drive the car uh, versus auto, sport and track. Put it in sport here, changes up the transmission and the way that it shifts, a lot more aggressive. Track is the most aggressive setting that we have. Traction control is off of course, suspension is tracked, very stiff and I almost forgot to mention we have of course the red key which unleashes the full 707 horsepower when you buy a Hellcat. You also get a black key, uh, and when you, if you use the black key, you only have 500 horsepower. Now we're not going to do a full uh, review of the infotainment screen here, but I love the performance pages. It takes a little time for it to load. That's where you can see how much horsepower you're using, the G-force, what current gear, and so on. And there's a bunch of different settings you can change here. But I just love how performance-oriented the uh, Hellcat is. <laughs> Yeah, what's it like to drive the Hellcat? <laughs> well, the Hellcat is uh, pretty heavy. It's around 44 to 4,500 pounds, and with me weighing 200 pounds, we're at around 4,700. But when you mash the throttle, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't feel like it's that heavy when it's going straight. It's immense amount of power in this car. So the Hellcat does the quarter mile on stock tires, the 275s, at around 11 to 11 3. A lot of people have uh, gotten this car down in the tens just by uh, putting uh, slicks on there or better street performance tires. That's without a tune, that's without any exhaust or anything like that. So it is definitely a really really quick car now the power delivery feels pretty similar to a car I had previously the uh, c63 AMG and that's after I got mine tuned that is the c63 is a little lighter it weighs around 4,000 pounds and it had a little less power about 630 but they were pretty comparable there I still think the Hellcat is slightly slightly quicker than the AMG was hard and it's just pure American muscle I mean it, it sounds so different I don't know why I keep comparing it to the C63 they're not like comparable really at all but just the sound and the experience of mashing the throttle 
is different in this Hellcat. Now, if you want to put it in manual mode, all you do is just tap one of these paddles, and it's an eight-speed CF transmission, if I'm not mistaken. And it shifts pretty quick, although I'm not that fond of these actual paddles here. I find myself actually driving this car in automatic mode more than in manual mode. Now, we currently have it in auto, so we're gonna put it in sport, which changes everything up. It's stiffer suspension. Transmission is in sport. I'm gonna downshift here. <laughs> the shifts are so aggressive, and I love it. And in track, it gets even more aggressive. So now I have no electronic stability control either, the car is telling me. <laughs> Dodge, Dodge knows what they're doing, man. They, they give you that experience. Just with the shifts being that aggressive, it just wants you to put it in sport and track. It, it's, it's awesome huge difference in the suspension as well the car gets real bumpy so I mean it's called track mode I don't know how many Hellcat owners actually track their cars it's more of a 1320 car and if you want to put it back in automatic you can just hold the right paddle down and it goes back into automatic or you change it with uh, the gear selector here <laughs> done it in the Hellcat but I think all you do is hit the launch button press brake and apply full throttle especially with those rear tires. We did zero to 60 in 5.6 seconds. So obviously it's a whole lot quicker than that. Uh, it's supposed to do it in around like 3.6, but that's what we're working with. This was a slight, slight, slight incline as well. We'll try it here one more time. your Hellcat of course but if you pick up a base model they start at high $50,000 and for that money you get again 707 horsepower 650 pound-feet of torque jam-packed with technology comfort and also actually pretty good fuel economy when you're not doing uh, you know quarter mile runs and stuff like that Back and forth to North Carolina, I got 21 miles per gallon. And I mean, that's not too bad. I mean, I don't know if, you know, I can do this type of video justice. If most part people are watching this video, they're probably like, well, you didn't mention this and that and, you know, all these things. And, uh, you know, I've only had the car for a little over a week. And these are my, you know, initial expressions. Uh, and this is also coming from a Ford guy, but I absolutely love Dodge. I love what they're doing. I just think they're cocky for doing you know the Hellcat the red eye the demon it's it's just awesome it stays true to that American muscle car heritage and for that uh, I respect them a lot but we do have uh, one more person in the family that is very involved in uh, the cars that we have in the driveway which currently is of course the Hellcat as well so uh, we're gonna go pick up Sydney from school and then we're gonna see what she thinks 
of the Hellcat. What? I just made up that been in here before. You want to get in? Ah. It's raining. What kind of car is this? It's a Hellcat. That sounds like a bad word. <laughs> no, it's not a bad word. Hellcat. Well, 
that Mustang interrupted me whenever I was talking. Rude! See, that's why it's bad to have, like, loud, like, loud cars, because whenever you drive by the cars, like, if, if people are having conversations in cars, and then you just drive by and interrupt their conversation and they stop. But if it's, a, if it's a good sounding loud, then it doesn't really matter. That Mustang sounded But that like, was a bad sounding loud. It, it was sounded like, like Did you hear that? It's very kitty whine? smooth. Did you hear the kitty whine? Did you hear it? Listen. You hear that? That's the Hellcat. Didn't you hear it? What? Are we in an animal? Yeah. No, we're not. Yeah, we are in a Hellcat. It sounds like it goes to hell. <laughs> <laughs> It's a Mercedes, honey. <laughs> that was funny. a Mercedes? Yeah, that one right. Where'd he go? No, oh, that totally one over there. It no, it's right there. See? That gray G Wagon. That's a Mercedes. Huh? Wait, is a Doge a, like, is a Doge a dog? Or does it say, like, Dodge? Like, okay, there's a Doge jo dog. I'm it, there's a doge jo, do, dog, or do you say doge dog? What? Dodge dog. It's a dodge, not a doge. I thought it was a doge dog. No, 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 not dog. It's a car, and it's a dodge. There's a there's a dog that's named after a. It's it's called a doge. What does that have to do with this car? Uh -huh. This is a I cat. Just, it's I a hell cat. Words. It's not doge. <laughs> I just saw the word Doge. No, it's <laughs> Dodge, car. honey. Dodge. <laughs> doge. A Doge is a dog. Alright, All right, so it's early morning here. Our last clip was picking Sydney up for school. Now we're driving her to school. Yes. It's a second to last day of school, honey. Yeah. We get field day today. It's like where there's like a bunch of activities in school and like you get to do it like and like you get in a group and then you get to rotate from all the groups and try every one of them and no work and I and I'm <laughs> celebrating my birthday today but my birthday is on June 10th and I'm just celebrating it today at school oh okay so I'm bringing cookie cake for it which is down there in the seat <laughs> oh well happy birthday <laughs> Sydney's 10 years finally, old finally 10 you're, years old you're the first person who said happy birthday to oh me. but that's because it's not really your birthday person. That's no one else said happy birthday to yeah, me. But it's not your birthday. You're just celebrating it at school. I know, but it's coming up soon. So well, we're gonna hello. Shh. We're gonna make a deal here. What? You're gonna start having birthdays backwards. I don't like it that you're getting older. Uh, I want you to be five <laughs> for the rest of your life. I don't like it you're getting bigger. Should I tell them how old I'm gonna be? I just told them. Oh. So this black car is probably gonna be gone pretty soon because I think the Ferrari is gonna be done soon. I want to get this car. What do you mean get this car? I want to like, I want to get one of these cars and have a Ferrari too. <laughs> okay. Because it sounds like a cat. Sounds like an angry kid. You hear that? That's called a supercharger. And in that layman's, you know, it like ten year old terms, it just makes the car very fast. Sounds like it sounds like boy whenever he goes. Who's boy? You mean so sorry cat? Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Which we call him. It was a squirrel. We almost hit a squirrel. Oh. Why? Why would this stupid squirrel just run right I, out in the road? I know. S R T. Yeah. I love you. 
love you. Okay, probably one of the longest videos I have ever made, but I do hope you guys enjoyed it. As many times on this channel, I involved the uh, family as well to see what their take is on the car that I'm driving at the moment. But with that being said, that's going to do it for the Hellcat review, I guess you could call it, for the time that I've had it and our experiences with it. If you're stopping by this channel for the first time and you haven't already and you want to, please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.